everyone, listen to this headline article. This one's out of CBC News Business. Job vacancies up almost 10% from last year, stats can report. So you've probably heard some of those reports that, oh, Canada's economy, it's on fire, and we're getting all this rampant growth in jobs in this country, <laughs> which, once again, is a contra completely contradictory if you just read articles from just a short time ago that saying, oh, Canada, we're not doing so well. Oh, the central might, bank might have to reduce the rates. Right? <laughs> like so, once again, more contradiction from those in the media and the established ruling class in this country. And the sub-portion of this headline tells the story. Biggest gains in healthcare and social assistance while energy sector struggles. It's been reported by Brandy Wakel, June 18, 2019. Job vacancies rose nearly 10% between the first quarter of 2019 and the first quarter of 2018, a new Statistics Canada report has found. Based on the agency's job vacancy and wage survey, which looks at 100,000 job locations across Canada, the report found there were 506,000 vacancies in 2019's first three months, up 44,000 or 9.6 percent from the same time last year. It also found that job vacancies increased in six provinces and one territory in the first quarter of 2019. Quebec, Ontario, British Columbia, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador and Nunavut all saw increases over the quarter. Today's job vacancy numbers continue to the upward trend in job vacancies we've seen over recent years, said Brandon Bernard a labor market economist for the job site Indeed Canada. Bernard noted that the pace of increase in job vacancies is slower than it was throughout 2018 when the economy was posting year-over-year -year growth around 17 or 18 percent. So the increase cooled off a little in the first quarter, but overall the trend is still up, he said. That upward trend is really continuing in the big three provinces where labor market conditions have improved in recent years. Quebec's growth was the highest at 23%, with 21,400 more job vacancies compared with the first quarter of 2018. The job opening rate in BC is also really high right now, said Bernard, with job vacancies up by 10.1%, or 9,300 new positions. Ontario's growth was the third highest at 6.9%, or 12,400 additional openings. But once again, folks, let's not forget the sub portion of that headline where all those increases are in the healthcare and social assistance positions, which are all public sector government employee positions. And of course that's the case, because all those government workers, all those boomers are definitely going off into retirement. They've reached their freedom 55. Yeah, that's the thing, Canada. Yeah, if you're a public sector worker, for the most part, you all get to retire at 55. While the rest of the wage slaves or tax servers in this country, <laughs> you're lucky if you'll be able to retire at 65. And even then, you better start collecting beer bottles or pop bottles to supplement that meager pension that you might get, or, hey, if it even exists at all by the time you retire. But like I say, the public sector folks, yeah, they're retiring at Freedom 55 with those gold-plated pensions, and that's why you're seeing an increase of positions. Meanwhile, listen to this contrast. Ongoing trouble in Alberta, Saskatchewan. The situation isn't as rosy in the resource-dependent provinces. In both Alberta and Saskatchewan, the job vacancy rate is below the national average. In the end of 2018, we saw real troubles in the energy sector, said Bernard. Although the sector rebounded somewhat by 2019, the job vacancy numbers suggest that employers still are feeling the heat from those earlier issues. The survey breaks out job vacancy data by industry as well, showing noticeable decline in the first quarter of 2019 in mining, quarrying, and oil and gas extraction. You know, all those jobs, all those fields, all those occupations that actually are the basis for everything else. Like I say, you have to build things. Like even for a doctor, what good is a doctor if he has no instruments or operating table or building to stand in, right? No, that's the thing. All these industries... In particular, the energy industry, yeah. How many doctors want to work in the dark, right? No, they, they require the lights on. They require electricity and a whole lot of other things that those who work in the private sector, a.k.a. the energy sector in this country, provide for everyone else. That's most likely going to be felt in Alberta and Saskatchewan, and there are going to be ripple effects through the broader economy as well. The report found that job vacancies increased in 7 out of 10 of the largest industrial sectors in Canada. Top of the list were positions health care and social assistance, which increased by 9,900 new vacancies, or 19% over the same quarter last year. Positions that fall under the banner of professional, scientific, and technical services, which include many high-tech jobs and professionals in accounting and law, saw the second most growth in actual vacancies at 9,100, or 28% over the same year. 
These sectors were followed by manufacturing, retail trade, accommodation, and food services in the biggest year-over-year -year growth. And then it goes on to say small business hardest hit. So basically, if you're looking at the, the segments of the economy, the sectors of the economy that, like I say, are seeing the biggest increase in job positions or availability is, once again, those who work for government, big government, the public sector. And why? Once again, I'm going to say one more time, folks, because those in the public sector get to have that freedom 50 Five. They get to retire early, and you best believe these are the kind of people that they are retiring early. Yeah, they're not those kind of people. They're, the, they're not like the blue-collar folks say, oh, I'm just going to keep working because I, I just love work. No, these are people like they're just barely doing what they got to do to get by and to get their checks. And the minute they're eligible to retire, yeah, they've already got one foot out the door. Because, hey, let's just admit it, folks. Those who work for government, not exactly the most ambitious, entrepreneurial, or hardworking amongst us. Sorry for the reality check, but hey, it is what it is. I didn't make that a reality. I'm just reporting on it. Anyways, folks, I'll place a link to this article in the description of the video below so you can continue on and read it. But basically, like I say, what you're looking at here from this report is, yeah, those in big government. Now, there's lots of positions in government available right now. But it also means, yeah, you got to work for government, which, like I say, they could offer me half a million dollars a year and wouldn't do a darn thing to entice me to want to delve into that kind of bureaucracy. That's one area that someone like myself wouldn't function very well. I love my liberties way too much to ever become part and parcel of this massively corrupt and bureaucratic state. It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.